Hi, everyone. This is Rob Rutherford. Welcome to Off the Wall. We're already at episode seven. We have a, another interesting guest in here today, Sean Cooney. He's a pre-construction manager over at Infinity Drywall over here in Anaheim, California. Hi, Sean. How are you doing today? Good, Rob. How are you? Thanks for having me. Good, good. I really appreciate you coming out here to, to tell your story. Anything new happening with you? Uh, no, just same stuff, you know, working on the uh, pre-construction stuff for Infinity, which is work going well. Enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. You know, I get to kind of build the job in my head and on paper and then hand it to somebody else to, to build it, which I enjoy because I don't have to want to, you know, be out there in, in the field any longer building the jobs myself. I just want to hand them off and let somebody else build them. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so you're, you're doing all troubleshooting. Yeah. Exactly. At the beginning, you're a human yeah. BIM. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I do the and I do work on the BIM also. Yeah, and oh. coordinate with the BIM. So I do all the pre-construction with this design build. We do the design build, and I work with the engineer to design the building, and then, you know the art framing and things like that. And then write the all I'll do all the troubleshooting, the, the RFIs and specs and submittals and all that kind of stuff. So it's been fun. And it. that that takes uh, all the pressure off of having to deal with it when you're on site. Yeah, it does. It allows the foreman to kind of get a heads up. You know, there's a lot of questions of an answer. Obviously, I might miss some things, but it gets him an answer, chance to, uh, you know, the job's kind of handed to him. Specs are already, or the submittals are already taken care of. A lot of the RFIs are written. The design is already there. You know, mm -hmm. and some jobs, the material's already taken off. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah, so wow. smaller job, I'll take the material off. Bigger jobs, I don't take the material off. But Are you guys doing a lot of design build over there? Uh, yeah, we have. Got uh, two of them right now. We're doing, and then probably another one in the books here, getting ready to start. So, mm -hmm. so good. what ends with that type of situation? The architect <laughs> is basically drawing you a box, and then you guys are putting the whole thing together. And no, the architect has the the drawings, the studs, and or the floor pens and the studs, and we kind of just come in and and design the outside, our clips, our gauge studs, you know. Interior studs, gauges, headers, king studs, mm -hmm. different uh, the way that we want to build it, exterior, interior. Then, then we submit it to the to the engineer of record, and then they stamp them. So, got and it. And we we take the liability, right? We, if we're design build, our engineer takes the liability. So, mm -hmm. we uh, just design the, all the exterior the way we want. Like I said, the way we want to build it, and the interior the way we want to build it, and any soffits that we want to build or mm -hmm. clips we want to use, and things like that. So what's going to work for everybody? Correct. And and they're they're using you for your expertise, and that's why they hired you. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So that's what that, I like to think, anyways. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, a lot of times these uh, these forty jobs, years, I should be able to bring something to the table. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have a ton of experience, and yeah. you've worked on so many jobs. Yeah, so, how you. did you end up getting into the industry? Sheesh! How did I get in the industry? Uh, way back in. Gee, I'm going to date myself now. 1978, I was digging graves at a cemetery. Are you kidding me? Yeah, 19-year-old kid. Really? One of the best friends I grew up with, uh, his dad owned a construction company. Actually, his dad was superintendent for Orange County Plaza for a lot of years, and he started his own company called Dave. His name was Anna Company. And I would see my good friend driving home at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm thinking, wow, what does he do at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? He'll be home already. So I asked him. He said, and uh, he, his dad didn't have any work for me at the time, but... He sent me to the union hall, and back then you just signed up, and then you would, they'd give you contractors to call. Mm -hmm. And so when I got, after I signed up, and matter of fact, the guy who I went and talked to who ran the union, I happened to go to high school with his son. I played baseball with his son. So I knew his son, so then we started talking. Long story short, they gave you a whole list of contractors to call. Like nowadays, you have to have a contractor hire you if you're going to get a letter of intent. Back then, you just called the union, went and signed up. They gave you a list of contractors. And you went and solicited your own job. Mm -hmm. So I just called all the contractors up. And then about a week and a half later on a Sunday afternoon, a gentleman named Jim, Ruth Jim Rutherford called me and went to work that Monday. Is and that right? Yes. She was there 17 years. It Really? Yeah. yeah wow. Like 17, yeah, 16 or 17 years. So how was the grave digging going, dude? It was it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was fine for a nineteen year old kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pay, paying you by the foot or by what? The, yeah, by the now by the hour actually. But Got it. Yeah, yeah. Mowed the lawns and dug the grave at the local cemetery in the town I grew up in. So, we're, so you're so, not a, a California local. Oh yeah, oh, right? yeah. grew up in Lomarada. 
Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Been here the whole time. Born and raised. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you went to work for Rutherford, they obviously got you on the apprenticeship program oh, yeah. over as, there. Back then you started as a 40 percenter. That's mm-hmm. how, it's, how it worked, 40 percent. Now I think it's first stage or whatever it is, but back right. then it was 40 percent. Then you just kind of worked your way up. Mm-hmm. You had to log the hours and yeah. that, that's go to school and all that stuff. School back then I think was two years. I think the, the German program was two years, I think, back then. Mm-hmm. Were you 440 or 42 all? 42. 42 all. Yeah. yeah. So were you in Santa Fe Springs when? Uh, you know? When it first started, it was over off of um, the 5 Freeway in Slauson over in uh, Maywood. Okay. That's where it started. Mm-hmm. And then I never went uh, over in Santa Fe. I was out before we went to Santa Fe Springs. Got it. Yeah. Got it. You'd go in there and tie laugh. And That's all you did. You know, they had all those low ceilings in yeah, there. That's all you, yeah, all yeah. you did is tie laugh. Yeah. yeah. Tie laugh and learn how to drop a plumb bump. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it was easy to do because it wasn't windy in there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Get, but, uh, that, get that done. Yeah. And the school back then was from, oh, sheesh, from September to June, just like the school year. Okay. Now it's all year round, I guess. Probably. Yeah, it is, and they have a lot of a uh, lot of book work. Yeah, that they do. The now. union program has come a long way since way back when I was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, you went in, tied last, and then left. Yeah, learned. They, they, we did a little bit of layout, you know, when yeah. we were apprentices in yeah, there. Yeah, not much, but yeah, yeah, lot, lots of lots of laugh time. Yeah, so like I said, it was from September to June, mm-hmm. and then when I got out, when I got out in June, uh, I never went back. I went back one week and they said, oh, you don't need to go back anymore. So oh, really? Yeah, exactly. Pretty lax then, yeah, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what what kind of jobs in the beginning were you working on? Well, back then, um, in the late 70s, racquetball was a big thing, right? Mm-hmm. And so Jim had a lot of racquetball courts. Matter of fact, the first job I did for Jim, I remember it, it was like it was yesterday. It was down in the uh, Long Beach Circle mm-hmm. doing a racquetball court there. And Jim was doing a racquetball courts. So I did quite a few racquetball courts courts with Jim down in Marina over a and mm-hmm. Santa Monica and geez, out in uh, South Worth County and mm-hmm. he even went up north to do racquetball course he was really big into it he got into the racquetball building craze and he did quite a few of them well yeah that was a huge fad yeah it was it was back big. then mm-hmm. and um, yeah I remember working on them too so you guys were framing them up yeah framing you, up and then we'd put the panels on so you did the panels yeah. too mm-hmm. we do all the framing mm-hmm and then we do the lobbies and the showers and the whole, the whole, mm-hmm. you know, racquetball court, shower, yep. lobby and all that. Then we install the panels. Yeah. And did, you know, the, the ceilings were all half inch. Yeah. They're uh, all half inch, four by 10, half inch tongue and groove. Yeah. There was a more light panels, kind of like, it was a like a panel. spline. It was a spline, spline in it. Yeah. Aluminum yep. spline, spline deal. Too. And then yep. the, and the walls were a three quarter inch. Yep. Uh, for mica. Fucking or, heavy. Yeah. They were heavy. Yeah. You know, remember having to stock that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. stalkers wouldn't do it, and, and you had to really be careful with yeah, it because you want to chip, chip. chip the edges, right? Because the edge was a finished product, right? Yeah, yeah. So. That was hard work. Yeah, so you had to make the bottom spline level, and you start stacking them up, and they had mm-hmm. a center spline, stack, stack, stack. And yeah, yeah. So and did pan- that for a long time. Panel Just, adhesive. Yeah. Did yeah. it for about a, oh, probably about a year, I guess. You know, in between other jobs, but mm-hmm. that was a big thing for Jim. Yeah, that was a huge fab mm-hmm. that was going. It was huge. Yeah, it was big. There was racquetball courts all over the place. There, there really were, and yeah. we were, we were even doing some of those in custom homes. Yeah, you know where where people would have them put in there. Yeah, the one we did down in South Oak County was in the guy's bottom of his office building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he put one in his office. Yeah, down there. Yeah, that that was uh, did a lot of them. I I worked yeah. on a lot of them yeah. for my dad. Yeah, you know, and we'd go in and and actually uh, a lot of it was poured in place concrete. Yeah. And people, they didn't, back in the day, they didn't want to hit the ball against concrete because what it was doing, you know, it, it would chip it out. You know, it would make the concrete weak and then it would start to, to oh, flake yeah. from, from that ball. And it, it actually performed different on those panels. Yeah, it did. And uh, so we would we'd, uh, hang Visqueen over the poured in place and then we'd shoot clips on and fur all that stuff out and then hang the panels yeah. on there. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, a lot of the ones, a lot of the ones we did for Jim were, were uh, we framed them all, and then we mm-hmm. put the panels on. Yeah, did but you ever have to hang any of those doors? Uh, no, I don't remember the doors. Yeah, that was that was really yeah. trick, you know, because you had to you had to router out the uh, the panels. Oh, for to the get the frames the in and stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah so yeah. it'd be a flush mount. Yep. Yeah, so the yep. ball wouldn't ricochet off them. It was, it was pretty pretty tough, you know. Yeah. It's had some special jigs 
you know, made up for the for the routers and stuff like yeah, that. Right. Yeah, it was hard work, man. Yeah. And then from there, um, like I said, with Jim for 17, we then went into, you know, hospitals and office buildings and, you mm-hmm. know, just all kinds of stuff. I ran, I started running, becoming a subform for Jim. Shit, I, sh- I remember I was probably, oh, I don't know, seventh stage, I guess, sixth, seventh stage. And one of the foremans I worked with took on vacation for, I'm going on vacation for two and a half weeks. You take over. Okay. It was an exterior lath and plaster job. Mm-hmm. So being a seven stage apprentice taking over, you can see what the, the journeymen weren't too weren't too friendly, too, weren't too happy about that. The seven stage apprentice was taking over. And yeah, d- hey, so you got a big raise. Yeah, I didn't get any raise. I just got. <laughs> no, no shit. They were really making money with you. <laughs> yeah, then. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no raise. I still got the same amount of money. Got yeah. it. Yeah, just had that. Just had the responsibility. Uh huh. But that was fun. Yeah, that that kind of sounds like because uh, I got moved up to a foreman from a seven stager. And, uh, but I got a raise. Yeah, no, I didn't get the raise. You know, got yeah. it, got it from, from Al. Yeah, you know. no, Al didn't give me the raise. I just got the, here, you're taking over. Okay. Well, that was good experience yeah, it was for fun. you. I enjoyed it. Yeah. That was a good experience for you. Yeah. The, like, the trade was a lot different back then. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a lot, not to say it's not fun now, but it's just, it was a, it was a lot, a lot different. Uh, you know, there wasn't all the paperwork there is now. There wasn't all the THAs there is now. There isn't all the, you know, CYA nowadays. You know, you got to write an R5 for this, write an R5 for that. You know, mm-hmm. nowadays you kind of just move. If it didn't work, you moved it over, and the superintendent was a old-time, crusty carpenter that came out of the field, and mm-hmm. he just made it work. Yeah. Well, he understood it. He understood, right. If it didn't yeah. work, it didn't work. And he would come back and tell the ar- architect, hey, we moved over because it didn't work. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Not five RFIs to come back later and... Mm-hmm just to make to move the wall over two inches yeah yeah that's so it's been it's a it's a lot different nowadays it is and uh, and especially with the safety stuff yeah you know yeah the safety stuff you know it's important it's good and bad yeah Mm -hmm. i mean it does it you know definitely everyone wants to go home safe right but yeah some some things where it kind of gets a little cumbersome sometimes you Mm -hmm. know when you got to tie off at six foot or you got to do this and it's Mm -hmm. just gets a little tough sometimes yeah yeah you know so were you hanging a lot of drywall when you were in, in yeah, the field? Yeah, I hung too? a lot of drywall. I did mostly framing. I framed a lot. Mm-hmm. Ceilings, you know, interior, exterior. Yeah. Um, did fr- we did hang drywall. Well, back then we did everything, right? You didn't have a guy that was a framer. You didn't have a guy that was a drywaller. You didn't have a guy that was a lather, right? Back then when you hired on, you were a lather. Mm-hmm. And you, you laid it out. When you hit the job, you laid it out. You framed it. You set the door frames. You hung it. You lathed it. Set the trim. Mm-hmm. Did everything. Yeah, acoustical now, ceilings. Uh, not to Jim didn't do very too much acoustical ceilings. So we didn't mm-hmm. do that, but you did everything right. Nowadays, hey, send me a couple of hangers. Hey, send me some lathers. Mm-hmm. Hey, send me a framer. Right. Well, right. Hey, I need the guy who said the door frame. Mm-hmm. Well, He's I guess I'm out. a lather. I kind of take pride that I'm a lather. That everyone, you did everything. You learned the layout. You learned to set the frame. You learned the frame exterior, interior, exterior, mm-hmm. drywall, lath, trim. Yeah. Interior draw. Um, Drywall trim, exterior trim, all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. really involved. You did right? everything, right. Yeah. You know, and the jobs back then, too, they weren't, they weren't looking for a, a job to get done in three months. You could have 10 guys on there and be there for six, seven, eight months, right, and get the job done. Now you have a job that size. They want 20, 30 guys, 40 guys on. They want it done in, in two months because mm-hmm. they want the revenue for the building, right? Yeah. So yeah. back then, it, it just wasn't that way. You could be on the, you know, I've been on, I was on the jobs for, yeah, five, six guys, they were for six, seven months. Mm-hmm. You get on a job that size, like I said, that size nowadays, they want 15, 20 guys and want it done in three months. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then they don't have the half the answers and you're leaving half the stuff off and then you wonder why you have to come back mm-hmm. to finish all the stuff because they don't have all the answers for some of that stuff. So. Right, right. But and that's always kind of been typical too. Yeah, you know? but it seemed to get worse and worse. You know, I mm-hmm. don't know when the phase of uh, you frame before the door frames got here. You know, right you know that, saying, that's oh. no bueno <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah you know all of a sudden you get these jobs where are the door frames at well they're not gonna be here for a while can you frame without the door frames mm-hmm. well no not really so then all of a sudden people start framing without the door frames mm-hmm. and putting the doors in after yeah or can you frame all the walls and hang all the walls and tape them and then do the lids later no i can't do the lids later right yeah it doesn't work that way yeah exactly it doesn't work that way but and unfortunately that's how it's sometimes it's been going you know and, right you know or they want you to uh, fireproof it and then put all the clips up? Yeah, well, yeah, hopefully not that bad. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it has been, you know, I'm sure you can talk to anybody in the trade how the, the, the lids, the lids are always, you know, hang the lids after the walls have been hung and sometimes taped. You mm-hmm. know, it's just, 
Yeah. And that's unfortunately how the trade has gone that mm-hmm. way. And and I think now I think everyone's starting to get fed up with how it's going. And we're starting to push back a little bit. And now mm-hmm. it's hopefully starts to goes back to where it was before. So, Do you have to negotiate on a lot of that stuff when yeah. in, in your pre-construction? Well, yeah, we do. And the scheduling. Mm-hmm. When, I, when I look at the schedule with pre-construction, I look at the schedule and see when they have, because a lot of these schedules have the lids after the walls mm. or the door frames after the framing. Mm-hmm. So you got to take a look. I took a look. That's one thing I do is I take a look at the schedule and make sure, hey, your door frames need to be with the, fr- your door frames need to be with my start and my framing. Mm-hmm. Why do we have the lids being hung after the walls? Yeah. yeah. So it's, I address that at the pre, I address that in part of the pre-construction. I just, I get that kind of out of the way for the guy who's not trying to fight for it on the job site. Right, right. And so do, are the GCs like getting that? Do they understand Um, They that? get it, yeah. But do they like it all the time? No, you know. Mm-hmm. And so. a lot of times they're the ones ordering the frames, right? Yeah. In yeah. most cases, they still mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. You guys install them. but we just install them. Yeah, they mm-hmm. order them. But they order them. Yeah. And then that way, if they're if they're wrong, it's on them. Yeah, well, in your but a lot of times in your contract, it'll tell you that you have to Deliver them, you know, receive them, shake them out, check them for throat size, check them for QCM. So they put some of the liability on you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, a, a lot of that has uh, has changed out as far as how they're managed with a lot of people out there with a lot of fingers in it. Right? Yeah, right. Well, there are a lot of them are, I mean, a lot of them are college kids out of school that, you know, they couldn't, uh, they don't know which way is up a lot of them, you know. Mm-hmm. I've been on jobs saying, hey, you're supposed to start framing. Hey, you're supposed to pour your curves. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't well, worry about. But it. don't worry about your d- your schedule says you're supposed to frame. Mm-hmm. Well, pour your curves and I'll frame. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, there is a a, a a sequence. Yeah. Of how it's supposed to get done. You know, like I've told people, you know, we want to start. Mo- I've been on jobs. When are we gonna start monocoating? When you get everything out of the way. Mm-hmm. Well, how much room do I need? Well, I need the whole goddamn floor. Yeah. Well, why can't you just spray right here? Because that's not how you spray monocoat. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, exactly. I need the whole floor to spray Monaco. I need everything out of here. Yeah. And you have to pull the safety card. Well, it's unsafe for anyone to be here because they're going to slip and fall in the mud. Mm-hmm. So get everybody out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can spray. Mm-hmm. I can tell them, I, say, I don't care if this ever gets sprayed myself. I don't care if this job doesn't get done because you don't want to get it out of the way. That's fine. Yeah. We'll just wait till you get everything out of the way and I'll spray it. Mm-hmm. I'll just document it every day that we're not being held up because you can't get everything out of the way. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's how it's gone sometimes. And, and that's the way it is. And it's, it's kind of a shame that's. It's gone that way, and and it's gone that way because there's a lot of young kids out there running work that uh, don't understand the se- se- sequencing of uh, how the job should be done. Right, right. And so that's kind of like what this thing is about too. Is I I think there's guys that can log into this and listen to this type of discussion. That's yeah, I hope so. On. I mean, and, and I'm not throwing anyone in the bus. It's just true fact that's out there. That yeah, know, I'm sure. Your other guests have been here. Probably, probably, I'm probably repeating the same thing. That yeah, heard. yeah, some of it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, and th- this is why it needs to get thrown out on yeah. the table because if ninety uh, percent of the people are saying the same thing, then maybe some people will look at this and say, "Yeah, you know, you know what? Maybe we should relook at this and and take that to heart and yeah. and figure out how to do it and listen to our trades that we hired." To get this done yeah. for us, they always they always say that you're an expert, right? When you're when you're building something, it's, it's, you get missed something. If you miss something, well, you're the expert. Mm-hmm. Well, if I'm the expert, why don't you listen to me when I tell you to get everything out of the way, and so we can spray the monocoat and we can move in a, we can move from north to south and get this job done in a productive manner. Yeah, yeah. You know. Hey, so when I met you, you <laughs> were um, you were driving a, a snow cat. Yeah, I did. Um, I did a little different thing as my my. As soon as I became a journeyman, which I uh, I would take off in the winter time and go ski for from November to November to March, I guess it would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, November, January, February, March, and well, March or April, I'd go ski. Yeah, grooming runs. Yeah, I'd ski for the four or five months and then come back. and And the superintendent for Rutherford was always nice enough to save a spot for me. Yeah. And I guess hopefully I was a good enough worker that he kept a spot for me. So he would always hire me back and I would go back to either running small work mm-hmm. for him. Mm-hmm. That stuff would only last a short time. Cause yeah. he knew I'd be taken off again in November mm-hmm. or put as a sub form for somebody. So I did that for quite a few years. I'd run work for him and then take off in the winter time and come back and run work for him and mm-hmm. take it back on the winter time. So I did that for about eight or nine years. It's a nice program. Yeah, it was. I thought it was pretty nice. 
You turned yeah. into a damn good skier too. Yeah, you know. I don't know how about now? I'm a little older, but yeah, I, that's but okay. It, yeah, but uh, yeah, it was fun. It worked out well. Yeah, that was uh, a, a yeah. nice arrangement that yeah. you had with them. And yeah. obviously, you were doing a great job for them because they did have you. Yeah, back. they hired were, me back every year. You're making yeah. money for them. Yeah, right. I mean, so that was a what a greater what the best excuse not if they didn't want me to not hire me back right when I came back in the summertime and they didn't need me. Right. So. Right. So that 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 worked out very. Yeah, it worked very out good. Well. Yeah, and. Uh, the superintendent at the time was, uh, he was a good guy. He was probably one of the better guys you'll meet. Old school. Yeah. yeah. He knew his shit. Yeah, he was. He was fair. Yeah. Um, he was a good guy. Yeah. And back then, they didn't even have pagers. No, you didn't know nothing. Yeah, you know, exactly. you, I remember, you know, they come out there with their notepads yeah. and, hey, what do you guys need? Exactly. You know, we need yeah. this, this, and this. Yeah. And he'd get it out there for you. Yeah. You know, get it done. Then when I, uh, he retired, then. Another guy became superintendent, and then I was, I, I left shortly, not shortly after, but I uh, had an opportunity to kind of become a superintendent somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I was just a general form for Rutherford at the time, and, and then I had a chance to become a superintendent. So I thought, well, I'm not going to become one here because the, the guy's superintendent is my age now, so he's not going to be gone for a long time. So mm -hmm. I took the opportunity to become a superintendent somewhere else, and then actually I kind of modeled my, my superintendent behavior after the original superintendent for, for, Rutherford. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's worked out well. So I was superintendent for a company called, um, I guess I can name their name, right? Uh, yeah, I think they're out of business now. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Well, that was before them. Down in San Diego. Yeah, they came, they came out of San Diego and they came up here. So I was superintendent for a little bit. And then I was there for a couple of years. And um, another company offered me a job to be their superintendent after a few years. So mm -hmm. I went to work for them. And actually, I went, the first job I did for them in 2000 was... Um, the uh, Galleria on Sherman Oaks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did that one for him. And then. Uh, was that for Burger? Yeah. I don't Bur know if I could mention their name or not. Yeah, Burger Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they were. Uh, they were big. At they were time. big. At they, the time, yeah. 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 They were big players. That was sad to see them go down. Yeah, it was. It really yeah, was. It was there 18 years. Yeah. And they had been in business for. 56 or 55 years, something like that. Wow. Yeah, a long time. And they did yeah. some big work. Yeah, they did. Uh, well, the job I was, I, the first one I did for him was uh, Sherman's Galleria, mm -hmm. and and then that was pretty good size. And then I, when I was done, I went and did a a animal research lab over by um, Chalks LA. Mm -hmm. Did that, and then went over to the monster of the monster, I guess, over at UCLA Hospital, Ronald Reagan Hospital. That was a monster. That was big. Yeah. That was, was huge. How many job. guys did you have oh, up there? at the time, 350 guys. On one job? Yeah. That is amazing. And you were in charge of yeah, all trades? Yeah, well. We, Tapers, yeah, hangers? Yeah. And what I had another I had another counterpart that was, it was a joint venture between Burger Brothers and Martin Brothers. Mm -hmm. So Martin Brothers had their, one of their guys, him and I were kind of the, you know, Running it, running it, yeah, yeah. Between yeah. so between they the had two of us. they had a they had a section, and you guys had well, a we had we it was all combined. We combined our manpower. Mm -hmm. We even changed the name; it was called a separate name. And got of, it. And we combined the manpower, mm -hmm. and uh, one the Martin Brothers guy, he ran, he did some of the office and office stuff and the meetings, and kind of ran the drywall portion. I ran um, all the framing, the interior framing, and all the there wasn't much exterior frame, but I ran all the framing and. Mm -hmm. and all the manpower for that, and the monocoat and all that kind of stuff. And then after after that one, after you got, so you were on site running that job. Yeah, right? I was there for shit, almost four years probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four, four and a half years. And then when you got done there, then you were actually the general superintendent. For then the I went and did a, started a cancer center over at, uh, in Orange County over here at, um, Burger did the hospital, and then right across the street, I did a cancer center. I can't remember the name of it now. Right over at uh, St. Joseph. Mm -hmm. Started that, got that running. Kind of that's my prelim of my pre-construction days. I got it started all, took it off, got it all figured out, and they let somebody else run it. And then I went over to uh, the um, Americana over on Brand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another monster job. Yeah. I went and started that. Got that going. And then I went in the office. Got it. Got yeah. it. And that that was kind of a trip too, because that was a just a massive nail on job for you guys. Which uh, yeah, it was. It was big. 
It was a big job. It was mm-hmm. big. It was a big mall. We had three buildings out there. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you did the apartments out there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did uh, the big main apartments, mm-hmm. and then we did two smaller condos on on the other side of the campus. Yeah, that was a monster, monster yeah, project. Yeah, so I started that. I was out there for, I don't know, four or five months, got that started. Mm-hmm. And then they manual left, and I became a superintendent. So th- then, y- then you were the, the big dog. Yeah. And you never you never worked on Getty, huh? No. Never, mm-hmm. never got I wasn't out with there. them when they had when they did Getty. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Because yeah. that was a that was a big one. We're gonna have a guest in here that uh, he's he's done some real trick work, you know, because everybody was up there. Martin was yeah, up Martin there. Yeah, Martin was out there. Raymond was out there. Raymond, Raymond, everybody was out Brady there. Brady had some stuff mm-hmm. out there too, and I mean that was just uh, a really uh, complicated project. Yeah. Lots lots of uh, log- logistical challenges yeah out there too yeah it was uh i was i've been to it i just never been mm-hmm. out there to see it mm-hmm. you know i had some guys that worked for me that worked out there with burger mm-hmm. on it and they said it was pretty wild when you but were uh, when you were working in the field as a lather did you ever have the opportunity to work on like really intricate ceiling work or anything like that when you were in the yeah field? we did a lot of you know a lot of dome ceilings you know and mm-hmm. barrel ceilings and you know and uh, con- you know, different ceilings. Yeah, like for in churches and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because you yeah. Rutherford was doing a lot of churches and yeah. stuff back in the day. Yeah, I did. And that's where all that trick work comes yeah. into play. They had a lot of old timers at that time. They had a lot of old time foremen. Some good old. They had some good foremen back then. Mm-hmm. Good old timers. So yeah, which was kind of nice to learn under. Right. Yeah, yeah. You you have a son in the trade now. Yeah, I right? do. Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing great. Yeah, he's a uh, foreman for these guys over here. Oh, really? Infinity, yeah. Good. Yeah, that's good. Congratulations. Yeah, he's done well. He's running jobs. Yeah, well, that didn't take long. No. Yeah, he had some good teachers. Yeah, and and uh, you you put him with some some guys yeah. that, that I I, uh, I made sure that he was going to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he, he like I tell him I said made sure you're going to learn because you're not going to live with me forever. Yeah. Is he still <laughs> living with you? No. Oh, finally you got rid <laughs> yeah. of him, huh? Yeah. <laughs> all right yeah good he, he finally got tired of the rules yeah, yeah. okay yeah. all right so uh it's a little little quiet at the home front yeah now, huh? yeah it's fine yeah is he yeah. is he still riding Gee, he's motorcycle? 27 years old he ought to be out by now right yeah that's true yeah that's true 27 years old still at home you gotta be by now so well that's yeah. kind of typical right now though you yeah know, for for a lot of these young kids yeah but he didn't he did you know he thought he was gonna well he thought he was gonna do some things that he could do if he was on his own. If he I said, no, that don't happen here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. Yeah, I mean, that that's, that's your castle and, exactly. and, 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 yeah. and it is what it is. So. He's a great kid though. Good. He's a, yeah. It's fun now that he's older, right? Now that he's 27 years old. Mm-hmm. I used to tell him when he was little, I said, let's get something straight. I'm not your buddy. I'm not your dude. I'm not your pal. I'm your dad. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you're old enough to take care of yourself and pay your own bills and make your own decisions, then we become friends. Mm-hmm. And now we're at that stage. The last Three years or so, four years. We're at that stage. We're friends now, so that's Which good. It's great. I mean, it, and then it comes with everybody right, who has kids, right? You sure. Know, at least you should be. You don't want to. I mean, mm-hmm. that's my opinion. You don't want to be your. You're not your buddy. You're not. You're not your son's buddy. Your pal at 15 years old. You're the dad, right? Or you have to be at that right. point. Exactly. You you're know? his dad. You can still be friends, but you can still talk and be friends. Right. Got you be your dad. So. Yeah. So he under he understood that, but now he's we're fr- we're friends now, so we talk about you know. All kinds of stuff. He took up the game of golf, which is nice. So we play golf together a lot. So oh, good. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then riding motorcycles. No, he doesn't ride any motorcycles anymore. He's, he's done, huh? Yeah, he's done. He's got to work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can't, I mean, he can't get injured doing yeah, it. Yeah, right. You know? You know? And I told him, you can ride as long as you, you got the money to pay for yourself when you're off six, seven months because you broke something. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't go out and cow trail or no. anything? Uh-uh. No. It's just, just easy to get hurt there as it is on the track. It right? is. It yeah. is. But he he was actually really moving. Yeah, up he was that. good. Yeah, he was good. Fast fast yeah. rider. Yeah, you know, doing all the. Uh, but yeah, we traveled all over, racing all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that I always say he was better than he thought he was, but that's being the dad, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, it was fun. I wouldn't trade those times for anything. Sheesh. I yeah. would come home and from work, you know, drive home. Let's say from UCLA. I lived in Whittier. You say Whittier. You know where UCLA is from Whittier is a long way. Drive mm-hmm. home, pick him up take them down to the track in Elsinore or Paris or Riverside in the evening time, right till 9 o'clock at night, come home, put the stuff away, get up, go to work, come home, do my ride to the track, 
right till nine o'clock at night, come back. No shit. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I wouldn't get, then get up on the weekends to take them, take them right into the, to the races. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun. But it's nice. Now it comes full circle. He says, man, you know, Dad, I never really realized what you did or what you did for me, get, coming home from work, taking me riding and coming home at night and getting up and going to work. Now that I work every day, mm -hmm. I don't think I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was really nice of you to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, shit, man. Yeah. I, I don't think I would have done it either because yeah. that's a long way to go. Yeah, right. From UCLA yeah. all the way to here we've yeah. been down to there. Yeah. yeah. But it was but it, it's it was nice to hear him say, you know, man, I really Yeah, I didn't appreciate it at the time. Mm -hmm. I just expected it. Yeah. Now that I'm twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty seven, whatever now you, mm -hmm. and I'm working in the trade and I know what it takes to work all day. Yeah. And he now that he's running work, he knows he knows what it takes like to run work. He says, mm -hmm. "You know, you don't just walk around with your hands in your pocket." No, I said, "No, you don't walk around with your hands in your pocket." Mm -mm. No, you're if you're not running them correctly and not paying attention to what they're getting done, they can put up a lot of bad shit. Yeah, today. right. So and you're tearing it out. Yeah, so it's it's fun now that he's older and he's run. He's ran, he works in the trade. He runs work and he he comes. He came to me and said, "Man, I really appreciate what you did for me all those years of." of whatever it was taken to the track or whatever. And, and that's a long drive down from UCLA to home all the way out to Paris. And he did it every mm -hmm. three or four times a week. I said, well, that's what you wanted to do, right? He yeah. Said, yeah. And yeah. But man, like I said earlier, I don't think I could do that. No, that's uh, yeah. that's a, a, quite a commitment. You, you never had to beg him to go riding. Though, no. Did you? Oh no. He, he was, was always fired was, up to yeah, do it. He was ready to go. Yeah. He was self-motivated. Yeah. He just needed a ride out there. And yeah, he just needed a ride out there. He had all the proper equipment. Oh, and he, yeah. You got him the cool oh, bikes yeah. and oh, everything. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was he winning races? Uh, he was. He did okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, I think he was better. I thought he was better than he thought he was. So mm -hmm. that was some of his, his little deal there. Yeah. And he, he, he got out of it before any major injuries. Oh, no. He's he's broken. He's broken up? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be, he'll, be, he'll be painful when he's 55, 60, trust me. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be gimping around. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Got some, does he have some pins on him? Uh, no pins, no but pins. a lot of broken bones. Yeah. yeah, broken wrists, broken ankles, broken feet, broken collarbones, mm -hmm. broken arms, broken stuff. That yeah. sucks. Yeah, that sucks. And then uh, when you're get when you're healing up from that and you get back in the game again, it's like you're starting over. I yeah, mean, you not know quite some starting over, but you still got to you got to get your speed back up to speed, right? Yeah, yeah. and. Um, then you're maybe a little bit more cautious. Yeah, yeah. or you're a little behind the eight ball, right? Some yeah, other guys. So. Yeah, you but that's know. a part of the game. It everyone, is. Everyone goes through that. So. Yeah, yeah. It, do you have any other relatives in the industry? No, mm -mm. none. You and your son. Yeah, and uh, I do have a nephew who's in the building trade, but not in this, in, not in this, uh, not in the lathing drywall trade. Mm -hmm. He owns a demo and demo and grading company. Got it. Yeah, got it. He but, he was a little. Your son was a little bit apprehensive in the beginning. Oh, to, he hated it to to be in that. Oh yeah, he that's the last place he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. He was so freaking pissed off at me when he got in. Yeah. Oh my god. How could you do this to me? Yeah, exactly. Well, I didn't make you do it. This is what you <laughs> wanted to do, dum dum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when he was seventeen, right? Yeah. Oh my god, when he got in, when I got him in the summer between his junior and senior year, he was freaking pissed, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, he couldn't stand it. Mm -hmm. And he stuck with it. Well, no, he had to go back to school his senior year, right? Okay. And then when he got out of high school, he uh, he got, he got in. in. Yeah. 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 And he he went through all the new apprenticeship. Oh yeah. Stuff. Yeah. You know, whatever it was four years, I guess. Yeah. It was. Yeah. He did all that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, have you been to the um the main training center in Vegas? No, like I have not. Head, I'd like course? to go though. Did he go to that? Uh, he did. Um, he was nominated by one of his teachers at the apprenticeship program, so he did. Mm -hmm. I think it was the the third stage program where they have, I'm really sure what they have. I think they have like a third period program or something like that. They have so many different yeah. things like for air and water barrier. And yeah. Stuff but they have a program. I think you have a, a journeyman program, a foreman program or whatever. And they have a mid stage apprentice program. He went to that. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty impressive. It is. Yeah. If you was, ever get a chance yeah, to, would like to, to go over there, you should but check But even the new out. one in Boynton Park is pretty impressive. It is. And the one in Ontario is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. The union has come a long, long way since, uh, way back when I got in. Yeah. They were freaking dumps. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, they exactly. were just in little unit C bullshit, yeah. you know. But uh, just the the programs they have, and the and the schooling they have, and everything they have, you know, the water filtration programs they have, the mm -hmm. sealing programs they have, that all the they have an ICRA program, which is which people who do a lot of hospitals mm -hmm. take in order to do the infection control program. They have all that there, mm -hmm. so they yeah. do all kinds of stuff. That's I mean, it's a lot different than it was back in the day. 
It really is. Yeah, it really is. Job. And it's state of the art. Yeah, it is. It's you know, been a lot of money. Those those buildings are nice. They are. Yeah. Very very impressive. Yeah. yeah. If you're ever in Vegas, uh, you should you should definitely check it out. You'll be impressed. Yeah, I've had a couple of uh, coworkers have gone. They said it's pretty impressive. Yeah, they got like they a, got ho- a hotel there. And the yep, whole thing. on site. You know, nice nice kitchen. They got all the food. They actually pay for everything. Yeah, right. You know, to get the guys out yeah. there to train them, and they'll fly you there, or they'll be give you gas money to drive out there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it's uh, it's it's uh, it's nice to see that they dump the money back in for the future. Yeah, it is. You know, to train and they need guys. to because yes. this trade needs to stay where it's at. And there's a tons of work out there, and they need to start. They need to man that. They need to be able to man that work. And there's, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there's work. I mean, there's so much work going on out there. I mean, I don't know when the bubble is going to crash, but there's a lot of work going on out there. I mean, just that you've got the new Ram Stadium still going on there. That's, mm-hmm. I mean, all kinds of guys out there. Then you got that Lucas Lucas Stadium going on. That's going to be or Lucas Museum. That's going to be yep. built. Yeah, you know, a lot of work going on out there. So they need them, and there's all kinds of stuff popping up all over the place. So they're going to need the manpower, and they've done a good job with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what do you think about how these apprentices are are turning out? You know, are they? Is it the same as? Well, like, I think it's the same as it was. It just depends on the guy how much one he wants to learn, right? Mm-hmm. And how much he wants to put forth, or how mm-hmm. much energy he wants to put into it. Same right? thing. Yeah. I mean, you get what I, you get what you put in it, right? You get yeah. out what you put in. You yeah. Put anything into it, you get. Back when I was an apprentice. When I scrapped out, I would. They didn't have plastic buggies back then. They had they called Georgia buggies, old metal buggies with hard rubber tires, right? Mm-hmm. And you would stack the drywall as high as you could on the side, so you can fill as much up as you could to get out, so you could get all cleaned up, so you could put your tools on. Yep. So the faster you cleaned up, the faster you get your pools, tools on. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing now. The faster you clean up, the faster you get your tools on. Mm-hmm. So, um, so if you got a guy who hustles, then he gets to work with his tools. Yep. And you're, you're making money with them. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And the, the, one of the downfalls I see is, and I try to, when I ran work, I try to stay with me. If you got on big jobs, let's say the hospital is on 350 guys. If you got apprentices that were good apprentices, unfortunately, you kept them there, right? Because they're good apprentices and they knew the building and they knew everything. And you, what, what you did, you did them a disservice, right? Because a job that long, four years, she's that kid could go through, he could be a fifth, sixth grade apprentice before, before you know it. And he hasn't learned anything because he's been on, he's been on a forklift or a chest buggy, right? Mm-hmm. So I think what, guys need to be aware of and and i was cognizant of it tried to be cognizant of it is after so long if the kid showed any 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 potential i got him off the off the buggy and put him with his tools Mm -hmm. just because you like i said you do him a disservice you know on a big job you just you got so many guys if you keep and he he knows the work he knows the job he just becomes easy now hey whatever go get that he knows that we don't have to train anybody sure so he's just he's an easy default right mm-hmm. he just stays on the buggy he becomes your head apprentice or whatever and before you know it, like i said he's seven stage six stage and he doesn't know shit mm-hmm. because he's you did the, the disservice so you got to be i think you got to be aware of how long you keep a kid on that buggy mm-hmm. to get him with the tools to so he can at least learn the trade well you know? and also too the more guys the more journeymen that they work <laughs> with the better off you Correct. are yeah, you know, and you do yourself a dis- you do the service, the trade a disservice, and you do your that kid a disservice, right? Because yeah. he, he doesn't learn anything. Now he's making, I don't know, whatever a, a mid stage apprentice makes, you know, twenty five, thirty bucks an hour, and doesn't know squat. Right, he's he's a cocking foreman. Right, exactly, you know? and no fault of his own. Uh, so. Exactly, exactly. So that's I think foremen need to be more aware of that, and I try to be aware of it when I run to work. It's just something you have to be aware of. And what I've what I've done in the past, I thought was a good thing, is if your company is signatory to them, you hire laborers mm-hmm. and you have laborers run, you have hire two, three laborers. The job's big enough to hire a couple of laborers, right? And then they can run all the apprentices and they can just rotate them. So now you have two laborers you can go to mm-hmm. and they, their wages never change. They're not looking to move up. Mm-hmm. They're not looking to learn the trade. They're laborers, yep. right? Yep. So you look, they can run off forklift, they can run men and you kind of rotate the apprentices through them. And it worked, it seemed to work fairly good with me. So mm-hmm. I've done that in the past and kind of implemented other places and it seems to work. Yeah, and all, every journeyman has his own little tricks too. Correct. You know, so the yeah. more you learn, the better off yeah. you're you're going to be. And the more the more guys that you're working with, you're just picking up on that stuff, and it yeah. kind of helps you understand how stuff gets put together when you get put in a situation of, well, I was working with Joe. Oh, that's right. He told me that. It, yeah. You know, like I, I should be doing it this yeah, way. Yeah, I tell apprentices all the time, you work with all these different journeymen, just pick up little bits of everything they do and mm-hmm. apply it to how you want to do it. Yeah. You know, but kind of back in the day though, it, you would get under a guy and he would be 
you would be his cub. Yeah, right. I was with a cub. I was with a guy for, sheesh, I don't know, six six years probably. Mm-hmm. You know, first started with an apprentice, then a journeyman, then mm-hmm. subforeman, and, and then eventually yeah. became a foreman. But I was with him for yeah, five, five, four years, I guess. Right. Yeah. And uh, you learned a lot of tricks from him. Yeah. And then when you would get with these other guys, you'd be right. like, oh, God, yeah. 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 I, I I see how this is supposed to get put together. Yeah, right, yeah. 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 I was with them for a few years, yeah. Mm-hmm. But back in the day, that's how it kind of worked. There, you know, each guy was with, oh, that's that guy's that subformant or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's not it's not like that now. No, nah, well, sometimes it is, but you know, some guys have their favorites, right? Each mm-hmm. each foreman, you can hire out each foreman, he's going to want to bring his guys to this job, right? Everyone's comfortable with their guys. Yeah. So they want to bring their guys cuz they're comfortable with them. Mhm. So they all have their their guys. You mm-hmm. know. Still yeah. that way with with you guys too. Yeah, you know each foreman has their guys and they want to bring them with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Try to keep them close to home. Um, or? I don't have that. That's not my my job anymore. You're done with that I, shit. Yeah, they have another guy that does that, mm-hmm. so I don't. That doesn't bother me where they go. Yeah, I don't, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, that's not my deal. Well, now uh, you're not having to drive around a lot no. like you were back in the day either. No, I don't drive anywhere. I don't deal with any manpower. I don't deal with any subcontractors. I don't deal with any general contractors. Mm-hmm. I deal with the the pre-construction guys on the job site, you know, the BIM guys or the engineers, but I don't have to deal with any of the manpower or anything like that. Right. Do you have to go out on site? Yeah, I go on site. Do you? Mm-hmm. Go out and uh, yeah. take, a, take a peek at yeah. it and make sure? Mm-hmm. Everything yeah, is on sites for meetings or or when the job starts, I'll go on site to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not very often though. I don't. I have no desire to go on the job sites anymore. No, no. Well, you're super valuable because you've been in it for so long. So you've you've got to be saving them shitloads of money. Well, I hope so. You know, yeah, that's, uh, a, that's my intent. Anyways. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why he picked you up too, because yeah. the the owner of your company is no dummy. No, I mean, he's, he's a, smart a very guy. sharp guy. Yeah, he's a smart guy. And um, he's yeah. he. He knew what what he was getting when yeah, he picked he's done, you up. He's done really well. He's mm-hmm. done. He's he's started that company from scratch and, mm-hmm. and yeah, got it where it is today. And he's and and job. really no construction that experience. No, he's just a smart guy, right? Yeah, he's got some brains. Yeah, yeah he's he's, well. he's he's a good guy. Yeah, I like him a lot. I like him yeah. a lot. But uh, but I've done some fun jobs. I did uh, some. I did you know, and Ana- when Disney bought Anaheim Stadium, they mm-hmm. did that. And I'm stadium, mm-hmm. which was fun. That was fun being a baseball person, you know, to go into the stadiums and, and redo the locker rooms and the batting cages and the press boxes and the the dugout suites and things like that. That was yeah. kind of a neat deal. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Well, that that was the thing that was nice about working in construction, too, is you weren't at the same place all the no, time. No, right, yeah. Exactly. You know, you're working with different people and, yeah. you know, yeah, all jobs have their, their little pain in the ass shit going on, but you're not there forever. No. You know, and you're not nice. with those same people forever. Yeah. You know, so it, uh, it it keeps it interesting. Yeah, did uh, you know, did some museums, which were neat. You know, mm-hmm. Japanese Museum downtown did that. Did some other museums. Uh, Santa Ana did some stuff. Mm-hmm. Did some, uh, just all over the place. That's kind of nice to drive through town and say, oh yeah, I remember I did that. Mm-hmm. Or especially when they're still standing. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I did the remodel at Bradley Terminal and that thing. No longer there anymore. It's all tore down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you did a lot of work at the airport. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did a lot of work at the airport. Yeah. Did the whole, like I said, the whole remodel of Bradley Terminal back in uh, shit, the 90s, I guess it was. Mm-hmm. Mid-90s. Yeah. They remodeled Bradley Terminal. D- did that. And then did some off-site uh, boarding buildings out there. Mm-hmm. You guys so. actually, uh, over at Infinity, do quite a bit oh, of work. Oh, yeah. There. They're out there all the time. They're huge out there. They're They've been out there for years and years and years. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Denny's, he's been out there, been out there a long time. Ne- never ending. Yeah, it's yeah. like a, it's like washing windows. Yeah, you know they. There's all kinds of work out there. Yeah, they, and it's going to keep on going, yeah. especially with the Olympics coming. Yeah, exactly. Be doing a, doing a bunch of stuff yeah. out there. What do you see uh, happening with the industry in the next ten years? Where do you see things going as far as uh, exterior claddings or waterproofing issues or well, the like new that. waterproofing, the new waterproofing is they're shying away. I mean, at least nowadays it's all the, the liquid membranes, right? Liquid applied, yeah. yeah. You know, they're, they're shying away from, you know, you don't see too many paper anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, you still once in a while you see it, maybe a slip sheet between the liquid membrane, but it's a lot of liquid membrane. You mm-hmm. know, that's where it's going now. Yeah. Um, some peel and stick, but not even the peel and stick is kind of going away. So, like I said, it's just the liquid membrane. And then, you know, obviously you got the Title 24, right? Yeah. So you got the, the Title 24 with the. 
mm-hmm. the foam and the lath and yeah, that yep. kind of stuff. So that's kind of put a monkey wrench in things. Yeah, it has. You know, they're all different. No one has a phone when I see, and I talk to people. No one, there's no set Title Twenty, no set system, right? There's all everyone has their own system. They make it up as they go. They right, don't even exactly. have a system. Right, exactly. You know, and and then that turns into the RFIs that you need to deal with. Right. You see that stuff. So, I mean, there's different, everyone, you can ask, you can line up 10 guys and they all have a different, different perception of the Title 24, different systems. I've, I've mm-hmm. done, I don't know, four or five of them, mm-hmm. six of them, and they've all been different. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And a lot of, you have to ask a lot of questions on how it gets put together. Yeah. You know, it's kind of yeah. kind of like a snowball effect. And you do one thing here and then. Yeah, it just the trims, right? Sometimes they're different. You know? Yeah, exactly. So you got the foam, you got the trim. Some have foam, some have paper, some, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes the waterproof is behind the dense glass and the foam. Sometimes the foam is a waterproof, and, mm-hmm. you know, paper on top of it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. There's all different ones. Yeah. And like I said, there's no one set system. Everyone's got their own theory behind it and mm-hmm. their own system. Yeah. N- nothing is standardized. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, it's, uh, it's here now. Yeah. And it's, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in next year, it's going to move into the residential oh, really? portion of it. It's going to be mandatory huh. in, in that too. So, you know, within the next five years, everything. So what are they going to do? They're going to put home on the outside and lock them up. Yep. Well, they do that in Arizona already. They do. It's one coat. Yeah. Right. You know, they put one inch foam up there yeah, and right. three, and it's a three eighths, uh, right. system yeah, that goes over the top foam and then put some wire in chicken wire and, and then yep. they're inch 17 and then or inch 20 and then inch 20 yep. yeah and then one coat yeah they've been doing that in arizona for a long time yeah. vegas they've been doing it there for a long time but i was just up in northern california this week in sacramento area and it's taken off there yeah in, in the residential end of it and we're starting to see it down here in southern california yeah. with some of these builders it's not mandatory yet but they're they need to they need to hop on and figure it out so that when it is they they have it figured out yeah you know, and the contractors know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they know how to get it That's done. The big but. thing I've been noticing, too, on these drawings that I've been looking through is uh, on the interiors, a lot of, you didn't see it much before unless it was a studio, but now you see a lot of STC ratings. Oh, they're, really? Yeah, they're becoming more and more prevalent than they did in the past. Mm-hmm. You know, all the STCs and, you know, all mm-hmm. that stuff. And they still don't figure those out because, you know, the architect, you have a, for example, 18-foot deck, and they got an STC 45. Well, it's hard to get a, a stud to span 18 foot and not get, have it tied into something and, or not get an STC rating. Cause you know, if yeah. you look at STC ratings, they're 24 in center. If you go to an STC rating, they're 24 in center, 25 gauge stud. Well, it's hard for me to get a 18 foot stud, 25 gauge stud to span 24 and some, or a 25 gauge stud to span 18 foot. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. You think it'd be like more in the medical and, yeah. School type of stuff that you would yeah. see that. Are you guys doing any schools? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Doing two colleges. Good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You're staying nice and busy. Yeah. Any vacations coming up? Uh, no. I was, uh, what, I was in ta- uh, Tucson a couple of weeks ago playing some golf, which was fun. That's where yeah. I kind of saw the, some houses going up and I saw the, the, uh, the one, one coat. coat going on. Yeah. 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 And then I was, uh, before that I was in, um, Oh, I was in a town called Murphy's, California. Did some wine tasting up there. That was fun. Mm-hmm. And then I did uh, went and did some uh, in Canada. Went and did some helicopter skiing for four days. Nice. Yeah, that was fun. Maiden voyage. Yeah. How yeah, are the legs? Th- sore. <laughs> 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 They're still sore, and I did it in the middle of fe- first of February. Yeah. Oh, my knees were killing me. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, Good it was fun. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. you'd want to get some days under your belt. Yeah, I didn't before have any did days. It. That was my mistake. Really? Yeah. So just uh, first runs of the season, doing yeah. doing heli runs. Yeah. Wow. There was some good snow and there was some rough snow. Yeah. There was some tough snow. Yeah. Yeah, the guy I went with, he tore it up. He did a lot better than I did at it, but I had a tough time. He's, he's younger than you too. Yeah, he is. He's younger, than <laughs> <laughs> and he had more days than I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was. Uh, so what was a random thing that you got to hop on that? Yeah. Because I mean, if you, you got to kind of train for that. Yeah, I bit, didn't train very well. You know? <laughs> well, if he just told I, Here's you, my training. I would get on my uh, a bicycle on a stationary bike and do that and, and then a, tra- and a treadmill and run up and down stairs. That was my training. And unfortunately, it wasn't enough. I mean, you can't train for that unless you're skiing, right? Right. Yeah. You got to have the days yeah. under your belt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, where we live, it's hard to get a lot of days in your belt to, unless you want to travel up and down to Mammoth all the time. And, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Did you make any runs up there this year? No, I didn't. I'm going to though here uh, probably next month. Actually, Still good. A, yeah, I know. I bought a pass. First year I've ever bought a pass. So didn't get to use that. it yet, huh? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. Yeah. I'll, it's good now. I bought it for 2020, right? 2020, oh, okay. 2020. All right. Yeah. So uh, after April 8th, you can use it on the 2020 on the for this mm-hmm. coming season. So I'm gonna yeah. go up there and. See it's going to be good for a while, dude. Yeah, see if I can't get my money's worth before the season starts next year. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Does your son ski? Yeah, he goes. Do, yeah. do you guys Snowboard, go together? He goes. We go. Yeah, we yeah. go snowboarding. Yeah. That's cool. But 160 bucks a whack to get on the hill, I thought I better might buy, buy a pass. You only need a few, you know, yeah. like five days to yeah, make exactly. it worth your while yeah. for sure. And they give you some good discounts on yeah. shit on the hill too. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, highly recommended. So it's the first time I've ever bought a pass at Mammoth, so I'm excited about that. Give me a reason to go up, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you guys would go up there in the summer too, because you yeah. would do the motocross thing yeah, up exactly. there, right? Right. Did he? Did he win any of those no, races? No, no. That's, that's that's a big race. There's a lot of fast guys that come there. Yeah. Yeah. He bikes perform a little bit different. Yeah, up there you have too. to get them. You, you have to get them adjusted mm-hmm. for the altitude, right? Mm-hmm. The new bikes you don't because they're all jet. They're all fuel injected now, so they all just adjust their. They don't need that. But the old bikes, you had to adjust the carburetor for the for the for the altitude. Were you his mechanic? Uh, if you want to call it that. Yeah? yeah, tighten the chain up for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Change the tire. Any motor work, I'd, I would, unfortunately I had to pay for the motor work. Got it. Yeah, suspension work I paid for, motor work I paid for. Yeah. I was the, the dad who, who would change the tire and tight. Yeah, change the flat. Yeah, change any, the change any, the oil filter, change the fuel filters. Any tie wire on that bike? No, 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 <laughs> no. No duct tape, no, no tie wire. Uh-uh. It's all all done right. Those bikes, yeah, those yeah. bikes were pristine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to put my son on a bike that go jump a hundred and some off foot jump and not have something that doesn't work right. So, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was hitting triples and all that shit. Well, yeah, they were not super, not triples like you see on TV. Uh huh. But yeah, doubles and triples and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, that's what. It's a funny thing when I used to sell those bikes. They say, "Is it raced?" I said, "It's a ra- this bike's raced." Oh, I don't know if I want a bike that's raced. I said, "Oh, that's fine." Mm-hmm. I said, "Let me tell you something." This bike is way. This bike is maintained way more better than if you buy some guy's bike out of the garage that just rides a desert. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm not going to put my son, just like I said earlier, I'm not going to put my son on a bike that's not maintained that goes out there and lines up on the gate with 25 other guys, and hitting jumps that are 50, 60 feet long, or, or sometimes some jumps are 80 feet long. Mm-hmm. If the bike doesn't conform, yeah. The guy who goes right in the desert, he rides it after that and throws it in the garage and doesn't do anything with it. Yeah. This bike here is maintained. Oils mm-hmm. change every couple of rides you mm-hmm. know filters change all the time so yeah he, that's fine did he ever blow any of them up yeah he had yeah yeah wrong mix no just the motor just blew up yeah yeah it, well everything's changed to a thumper now right oh yeah everything four stroke now very well very there's two strokes now i mean two strokes are still around there's a lot of guys still riding them but most most of the guys ride the four stroke yeah yeah that they they got the torque down. They're better bikes, anyways. Yeah, they're I, better bikes. They're just expensive, though. Yeah, I but mean, to maintain them, to buy them, to maintain them. Yeah, they're just. I mean, if you don't have a lot of money, two strokes is fine. Yeah, well, there's nothing like the smell of a two stroke. Oh, okay. too. the best smell in the world. I love it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's that's it's yeah definitely smell the world. Yeah, for sure. That's when the Supercross. You go to Supercross early days and Supercross. That whole smell cloud of two stroke motor oil in that yeah. stadium. Oh, yeah, God. it's pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. It it kind of sounds funny now to hear one. Yeah. You know, because every once in a while you go yeah. to those races and you'll hear a guy out yeah. there because everything is uh, four yeah. stroke yeah, now. Right. So, yeah. When you hear it, you turn your head. Yeah. 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 So you yeah. don't uh, you don't see uh, any significant changes happening with new techniques or materials in well, the future? The, or You know, the besides the Title 24. Yeah, Title 24. I mean, all the water, all the water membrane stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of the. Um, a lot of all the, the programs. I mean, if you want to talk about all the programs for the all the CAD programs and all that stuff changing, all the new layout tools mm-hmm. they have. The oh yeah, tools, you, all the BIMs tools. You, you get your stuff. You get your BIM. And you can put it in a model and you put it in the layout tool, and lays the, lays the building out for you. You, you know, you, I could put a fifth to sixth stage apprentice and lay the whole building out. Right, you just put the model in the, in, the, in a tool, and push the buttons and it's on a screen and you push that button the two marks come together you mark it or you have the the other you know the, the other total station that they have out there the other machines out there they can do all the layout so that's a big that's even a big radiuses mm-hmm. they lay everything out that's amazing yeah that is amazing and and everything is uh no more plumb bob no that's gone no yeah it's all laser yeah 
but just the layout tools they have and all the BIM CAD stuff and mm -hmm. all that stuff, you know. And then, um, matter of fact, one job I just sent out to a company to get, uh, and I know a lot of guys do this already, but get uh, get it modeled from the substrate to the panel from, from the panel back to my substrate. Get the my studs modeled for the angles and the shapes and stuff like that because they're a bunch of weird angles, the mm -hmm. radius and serpentines and angles. And it's kind of hard to figure out in the job, so I got a, a company give me a price to get the stuff modeled. Oh wow! So you can they give me the angles and the shapes and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so all that stuff is that's a big thing that's going on in the, in the industry, I think, and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. You know. Wow! I know a lot of these big companies that do it all already. You mm -hmm. know, the big guys that do it, they've done that modeling for a while, but but it's just. Uh, um, do you guys do a lot of prefab? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you you set up set the jigs up and build all the brackets and stuff and and throw it all together. Yeah. Any uh, panel jobs um, as far as prefabricating the panels and hanging them? Like the metal stud panels? Yeah. No. No, not yet. No. Yeah, I did those back in the year. Back in the day, we did some of the prefab metals, and it, mm -hmm. it worked okay. I yeah. mean, I think you can stick frame it almost as fast sometimes. I did see a job out in Riverside that they it was all prefab at um, Riverside Hospital where it was all prefab. The, uh, the panels all came out and everything. I think the, I want to say the day I thought. Mm-hmm. All prefab and hung them. Yeah, it seemed to go pretty good. Yeah, as long as it's yeah. uh, laid out correctly yeah. and and there's uh, it's, it's kind of like anything else. If you start off bad, it's going to go bad. Yeah, the guy who was running that job at Riverside was a pretty smart guy for that mm -hmm. company, so I'm sure it went well. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. But I, I was doing some work at, at that hospital and I saw the prefab panels going up there already. Mm -hmm. it, it's not it's nothing new. No, it, it's it's been done a lot yeah. in the past. We used to prefab them on the ground in our cell. We'd get we'd get planks and build a build the format of planks and prefab them there and drop them off the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If it's all like typical stuff mm -hmm. and it and it looks like there's some flexibility yeah. there, you can get it done for sure. Yeah, I can remember having we build the forms on with planks and mm -hmm. and build them. That was back when red studs were around. Yep, yep. <laughs> Are you having to deal with? Uh, in in your end of it for pre-construction uh, any of the waterproofing meetings and stuff that yeah, are happening when they're putting all this stuff mm -hmm. together yeah. did they listen to you when uh, yeah when yeah. you mm -hmm. make suggestions yes they do and it which and is it, nice yeah yeah it's all me with the water consultants you know mm -hmm. each each job now that has a, they have a, they have a water consultant right whether it's a third party or he or he works for the company right mm -hmm and so you, you meet with them and, and you go over the water de the waterproofing details, you know. Yeah. The big thing is nowadays is compatibility, right? Is that compatible with this? Is this compatible with that? Is that mm -hmm. caulking compatible with this? Is this waterproofing compatible with that? Is that pillow stiff compatible with that? So mm -hmm. so that's a lot of it. A lot of it is the compatibility issues mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the sequencing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, those those details get, like, pretty complicated. Yeah. You know, because yeah. a lot of times they're just on an eye buster. Yeah. You know, and it's like there's all these lines. You'd be surprised how many guys don't understand what ship laughing is, how water runs downhill, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, it really does weird stuff now, too, yeah. because these, these buildings are have so much suction. Yeah, they'll, I mean, you yeah, know? they can, the leak could be in one spot and you find it, it could come off of the, it could be, you know, you know. 25 feet, feet away. away from where you're finding the water, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so now the new thing is, is they're doing a blower door test. Oh, yeah. On, on. That's going to be like a mandatory deal to where, you know, they before they'll give you the certificate of occupancy, they'll put a blower door on it to see how much air is getting sucked through it. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And that's a thing that they're they're teaching in Vegas at that, that headquarters. You know, that's like a certification thing oh, wow. that they're doing to make sure that the trade knows how all this stuff gets put together yeah. and it can pass. Right. You know, because once they're doing it after the fact, right? So all this shit's in there. Yeah. And it's got to be right because once they find the leak, then you're opening stuff up to throw some schmeckum in there. Yeah, right. right? Exactly. Yeah. So um, that's it, that's a whole different yeah. deal. You know, happening. I mean, there's things out there for scaffolding now that kind of help prevent, you know, leaking. I mean, back in the day, you put wire in there and, and mm -hmm. the wire would, you know, I don't know how many times I've gone back and... When I was with superintendent, how many times I go back and find mm -hmm. uh, we got a leak in the building, you know? Yeah. And oh my, it's the wire tie. Yeah, yeah. And, well, or the the uh, bumper post. 
You know, yeah, we, right. we used to have now, the there, now there's a new guy. There's a new bumper post out there. It's kind of pretty nice. It, it is. It's on the. It's on outside the waterproofing, which mm-hmm. is kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, that was uh, uh, ingenious. Yeah, it was a great idea. To like I said, I wish I would have thought of that. And it holds a lot of freaking weight too, yeah, dude. Right, yeah. I mean, you know, they're tarping these jobs yeah. now, and it's like a massive sale. Yeah. And and uh, they they did all the testing on that to see how much it could hold, right. and it it passed. It yeah. passed with flying colors. It's, it's a good idea. It really is. So I use it when I can. Good. For all over time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's uh, takes care of shit in the back end for you. Yeah. You know that you don't exactly. have to come back and deal with. Right. You know, there's never yeah. enough time to do it right the first yeah, time. Yeah. Right. But there's always time to tear it apart and look for the leak. Right. You got it. Yeah. You got it. So you got to get get rid of this liability for our trades. Yeah. You know. Which so is good. This trade's come a long way for that kind of stuff, which mm-hmm. is nice. There's some there's some great stuff out there, and 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 but what, what it does is all these great things kind of take away from the craftsman of the you know take the craft out yeah. of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You get these layout tools. Well, I can put a fifth stage apprentice on that layout tool, but if I take that thing away from me, you couldn't lay it out. Yes, exactly. Which is kind of a shame, right? Exactly. Well, that's just like this fucking church that just burnt down, right? Yeah, right. They want to get this thing done. And they think they're going to get it. It took them 100 years to build it. Yeah, right. They want to get it done by 2024. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, and n- they're saying, well, not, nobody can do that work. Yeah. Well, that's because exactly. we have all this modern shit. Right. You know, Which that's, I mean... Don't get me wrong. I, I'm all about this new stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's all great. The new, yeah. all that, anything that's new, I'm, I'm all about it. Yeah. If, if it makes it happy, but it just takes the, takes the, again, I don't sound redundant, but it just takes the craft, it takes the, the craft out of the, out of the, out of the people. Yeah. I, I agree with you, you know? 100% on that. You yeah. know, some, sometimes you got to do it longhand. Yeah. Right. You know, just to make sure your chops are up. Yeah. You know, I mean, we used it. to roll our own stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I Lay it out it. on the floor and, yeah. Bend a roller, it to right? It. Yeah. Yep. Go out, I can. I remember going. I they do bar, big barrel ceilings. Go out in the parking lot and roll it out in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then get a roller, bend it to that roller. Yeah. Exactly. That and um, went pretty smooth. Yeah. Doing Worked it that fine. way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they they they're all still they're, they're all still, still up. Yeah. 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 They're so. all still up. Well, Sean, you had a really interesting story to tell, and I think a lot of well, the was. a lot of the uh, viewers that come on here are going to want to hear it. Good. And um, you keep up the good work out there, and yeah. I really appreciate you coming out and joining us. Sure. All right. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Good job, man. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you weren't fucking nervous.